Welcome back to Triumph Talks, continuing this series with Bailey Smith, author of Married to an Illusion. Today's topic comes from a chapter that is titled Living with Jekyll and Hyde. Now, anyone who may have a relationship with a narcissist is probably familiar with the massive mood swings that they can have. And what we're going to do today is actually help you understand what in the world is going on in their minds that causes them to behave that way. So Bailey, thank you so much again for joining us and continuing to teach all that you have learned and all that you have to share to help people be protected and escape this kind of abuse. Do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like living with Jekyll and Hyde? Well, it's not pretty. And again, thank you for having me back on the show. Um, so you're, you're basically living with someone um, that you have no idea um, which personality is going, which mood is going to show up. So, you know, in my case, um, I'll give you an example. Um, one morning, um, um, I had slept in, he had to leave early for a meeting. Um, I got up to uh, freshly brewed coffee with a little note, have a wonderful day, I love you. Um, and then at night, um, I had no idea which one of these um, uh, personalities was gonna show up. And just imagine on a daily basis, um, living like that. You're walking on eggshells. You're, um, you're, you're living in fear. Um, you're trying to just do everything in your power, um, to make, to make them happy. Um, well, at least you you think you are. Uh, making sure everything's all nice and clean and the house is in order and have anything that they've asked you to do, you do. But you have absolutely no idea who's walking through that door that evening. And it's not a pretty picture. So you're, you're, you're really on edge. I, I would think that's probably yes. where that cliche term walking on eggshells comes from when you're dealing with somebody who's so unpredictable. And Absolutely. in the case of, of narcissists, you're you're getting massive swings from one type of person who's just wonderful and treats you wonderfully. And then it can even happen in a matter of seconds where they suddenly become um, a devil right there in front of you. And you are the you are at fault, right? Absolutely. Either, you know, Absolutely. You or something that's happened, but whatever's happened, they're 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 putting the blame on you and they're they're sending you all of their anger um, in this situation. So now that I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this are probably sitting there going, okay, I've seen it. I'm very familiar with how wide these swings can be and how quickly, how they can just go from one end of the scale to the other. And you might be your head might start spinning. And it does that because for the neurotypical, we don't function like that. We don't fly from one end to the other. So it's very hard to understand what's going on. In this episode, we're going to be sharing what Bailey teaches in her book to understand what you're dealing with. So the first term that comes up is something called object constancy. And I'd like to just take a minute and read an excerpt from your book, because I think this does such a great job of explaining just what we're dealing with when we see this kind of behavior. Um, it says, one of the primary explanations for the Jekyll and Hyde behavior of a narcissist is that they aren't capable of something called object constancy. In neurotypical people, this is the ability to keep a positive perspective about someone while at the same time feeling frustrated, hurt, or angry at the person. For a narcissist, not having the ability to simultaneously maintain both positive and negative feelings about a person who are essentially objects to them, which is where you get the term object constancy, uh, means that every disagreement becomes a fight and every fight is a breakup. 
So you can relate to that, right? Like, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. You didn't do something right. And here we go. It's, it's such a mind control manipulation, you know, um, you know, I, I'll give you a, another example, you know, um, and as we come um, coming upon um, one of our holidays of Passover, um, it's very traumatic for me because it brings back a lot of memories. It brings back good things. It brings back bad, 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 bad memories and good memories. And, um, and, you know, there were times where he would be so helpful um, in helping me prepare. And if you're Jewish and you, and you um, keep the religion and you, have your preparation for the holiday, and that's just one of them. Um, but there's so much work that goes into it. Um, it could be weeks, and a lot of money, and 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 again, a lot of preparation. And we almost always had um, a table full of guests. So there would be times that he would be so very helpful, and um, you know. I always set a beautiful table. Um, and so that's how the day would start or, you know, the 24 hours before the holiday started. And then come the holiday and people are sitting around the table. And I've mentioned this in prior shows where I would either silently beg him or prior to the, to having guests over, whether it's family or friends, I would say, please behave, you know? Um, that's not normal. We're supposed to be equal partners here. Um, and many times, you know, they can't, they have no control. And he would lash out or just be mean or, or, or just, just the, that, that Jekyll person would come out and, um, and it would destroy all the hard work and everything that was put into it. Yeah. And this one example, one, one time, one example. Yeah. So what you're describing then, we talk about their inability to hold two emotions at once, which is to be positive and negative at the same time. So that is actually the malfunction of a disordered brain. Um, and I think that's really important for those who are dealing with to understand, which is not to um, excuse it, but but sometimes when you understand what's going on, it just helps you not be so bewildered. Now, when you saw the changes go from super helpful, excited about the holidays at the start, and then by the time you sit down at the table, he's yelling at everyone. And I know in your story, you talk about it at one Passover, he, he, he said, your guests should leave. <laughs> you know, and you're, everybody's it's can't horrible. believe this is what there's. So what's going on is, first of all, he can't maintain that object constancy, but the actual process of jumping from one uh, mood to the next mood is, is a term that's called splitting. And again, I want to just read another little excerpt from your book that's teaching people um, what's going on here. And so it's swinging from loving you in one moment and raging against you in the next is a quick flip of the object constancy switch in their brain. This is what's called splitting and is the movement from idealizing someone or something, in this case, it could be the holiday, right? Idealizing it, viewing them as perfect and wonderful in one moment, and then instantly seeing the same person or holiday, <laughs> I'm just throwing that in there, as terrible trash the next, often with the slightest trigger. Again, the eggshells issue, because with the slightest trigger, they can, they can jump and do this splitting, and you don't have control over it. And you, you don't even always necessarily know what is the trigger. What's the thing that's going to make them mad? Like, for example, you're talking about the situation at Passover. Could you, was there a moment where he, something irritated him and he did this quick so, switch? So um, in, in this one instance, um, um, he was having 
um, he was reading the 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 book, you know, we we read the Haggadah, which is the book of of what we went through um, in Egypt. You know, we're retelling the story, and he was sitting with my my youngest at the time, and they were talking about the book that he created at school. They put together. And, you know, after a while, you know, I wasn't part of it. So I actually turned my attention to uh, my friend that was there. And it just triggered him that I wasn't paying attention, Mm -hmm. um, that it was not about him and my child. It was about my friends uh, or my friend. And literally, he, he said they can leave. And I was mortified. You know, this is a divorced woman with adult children. And, you know, um, I we had that many, many, many times. Yeah. And it's... So, so you could see there was something that irritated him. And instead of just doing the neurotypical thing, which would be to say... Either maybe, hey, can you can you talk a little quieter? I'm teaching, or hey, I think this is important. I'd like you to listen. That would be the normal way, right? Of addressing this. Or, or take me out of the room. Yeah. You know, just, just kindly say, say to kindly say, hey, this is this is why I have a problem, right? With whatever's happening. And instead he went from this is a wonderful holiday to get out and yelling at, at the dinner table. Um and, and so, it didn't matter who it was. Right. It didn't matter w- if it was his friends or my family, his family, whoever. It did not matter who was there. Now, there are many narcissists that wouldn't behave like that in front of people. You know, they may take you into another room and yell at you. Yeah. Obviously, people in the other room may hear, but they would at least try and do it in private because in 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 front of other people, they want to come across only as this wonderful wonderful person. Yeah, um, some some are capable of hiding it, and and to kind of go back a couple episodes, we talked about the different types of narcissists, and um, one of the, is a covert narcissist, and that's that's the kind that nobody understands that that's what's going on because it's always very deeply hidden, except those who are closest to them are getting that abuse. Um, but yeah, so. Just for the, the the teaching that you're providing in this chapter is, is to help people. They can really get their mind around this crazy behavior and what it is that's going on that makes them make such a, a turnaround um, as they do. And I, I'd really love it if those who are watching this could share in the comments um, any experiences that you may have had with dealing with the Jekyll Hyde situation and... Um, and did you know, is this is this new information to learn about actually what's going on in the brain? Have you heard the term object constancy or the term splitting before? And if so, um, share your experiences and thoughts around it. That would really add a lot to the conversation that we're having. And, here. You know, I want to go back to my early days um, in my marriage mm-hmm. because this was towards the end already. But, you know... Um, there was Jekyll and Hyde from the beginning. Mm. You know, I, I remember my mother even saying something to me once. She used those exact words. And, mm. um, you know, I always ch- uh, chalked it up to him having anger issues, you know, and blaming it on his, his family mm. and, his, and, and the way he was mm-hmm. raised and what he saw. This is not anger issues, okay? You know... Don't make excuses. If you see this kind of behavior consistently where you have to walk on eggshells and you fear for your life or you fear for your um, children or you, you, because it's, you're living in a war zone and, and I'll probably use that term many times over and over. Um, that's there's anger, having a temper, getting past it, apologizing, or even going for help. And then there's a narcissist with with the 
where they have that splitting and the object constancy, where it's really a neurological, psychological, mental disorder. Um, and I don't believe anger is a mental disorder. Um, right. It's more and, the, it's the quick switch that's, that's really right. showing up. In, in right. the, Somebody in the that disorder. has a temper mm -hmm. is, is not, it's not the same thing. Right. You, somebody that has a temper and that has mood swings where they're to one extreme to another, that is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, these are red flags, pay attention to it. Um, I just went through an experience with a boss um, over almost eight, eight months. And it's something I will talk about um, down the road. I'm still um, getting past it where I got sucked into the charm and saw certain signs and said, oh, they have anger issues. No, there was personality issues. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a very big problem. And we're so, women empaths, um, and it goes both ways. You can have women that are narcissists that behave this way. Um, we're so forgiving and we so want things to be um, perfect and great. And we never want to see ourselves as victims or, you know, or ending up in, in a divorce. Yeah. So this is why I'm sharing with you because, you know, uh, 30 years ago, we didn't know any better. Yeah. And that's why what you have to teach is so important. And um, if uh, those who are watching this show, if you've got something out of it, I hope you'll take just a minute and hit the like button. It helps us to continue to produce shows and to actually just to reach more people, especially if you subscribe. The more subscribers we have, the more YouTube will share these shows. And so if, you, if you'll just... Uh, hit that uh, subscribe button, you'll also be notified because we're just beginning. I think we're on, uh, I, I'm not sure what, chapter seven of 30 chapters of Bailey's book. And we're just going chapter by chapter because each one of them is just full of so much important information that'll help you recognize what you're dealing with, identify it as is in your tagline and escape it. So um, <clears throat> thank you for joining us again, Bailey, and for all of those of you who are watching, uh, just a little reminder that what we are discussing is Bailey's best-selling book titled Married to an Illusion, which is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle. And be sure to subscribe and watch for our next episodes where we have a lot more to teach.